I'm going to present results on triplets, which are a particular kind of uh, roughness at Reynolds Snow 550, and compare them with the previous results we have before the year at uh, Reynolds Snow 580. Okay, so as an introduction, uh, riblets are a particular kind of roughness which is two-dimensional and homogeneous, and then when aligned in the direction of the flow, they can reduce drag. The typical drag reduction curve of a riblet will look like those over there. There's for vanishingly small sizes, um, uh, linear drug reduction. If, uh, as the size increases, that eventually gets into a, a degraded regime, which is the optimum. <laughs> and for even larger sizes, riblets uh, behave like regular uh, K-profits. Um, so the, what, what we had previously reported in, in the previous APS meetings uh, was that the, that degradation, that breakdown of the linear viscous regime was caused by the appearance of uh, elongated spanway structures uh, that caused additional Reynolds stresses that uh, were responsible for the extra uh, drag. And in the right hand side you can see uh, a visualization uh, at an instant of uh, our simulations at Reynolds Snow 180. And uh, the, the, the large bottom plot is um, a wall parallel plane and uh, what's the variable plot is a vulnerable velocity and, and you can see the spanwise coherence, uh, the vertical C would be the spanwise direction, uh, jumping across riblet groups. Oh, <laughs> okay, so those no structures that I have uh, made a square around. Uh, so they are elongated, the coherence jumps across the groups, and they, uh, we do not know how long they can get, they can be a from a few riblet uh, groups in span to the whole channel in our original simulations. And they had a very clear uh, uh, streamwise wavelength, which is on the order of 150 volumes. And the, the, the top small plot uh, would be the average uh, streamlines for, for this same thing, but uh, with a, a wall normal direction. So you can see that in, in the average, in the spanwise direction, they, they look at wall. So, uh, our, uh, this also led us to, to the conclusion that, that, the, that the, 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 this drug reaction curve could be scaled with a universal, well, almost universal parameter, which would be the roof cross section, so that the degradation happened uh, at the same time. The theoretical justification for that was presented in this paper that I also talked about in here last time. So, those red dots would be our original set of the NSS covering the full. Reducing range. And what we've run now are four cases in yellow, a smooth channel, sorry, green, and those three cases over there. These are much more expensive than 550, so we've reduced the number of cases. So, we've, why have we run these 550s? Um, some people have already in the previous talks mentioned that the, for the uh, flow in a channel to uh, really resemble a, a flow in a turbulent boundary layer where the um, elements in the wall are much smaller than the thickness of the uh, flow, uh, uh, you have to satisfy a condition like that. So the, the channel or the, the flow thickness has to be at least 40, 50 times higher than, than the size of your elements. Otherwise the flow resembles more the flow ar around obstacles or in our case uh, along the along groups. That, that is not the case of interest for, uh, for of industrial interest. Um, and now for riblets which are of size H plus equal 15, if you uh, simulate them at Reynolds style 180, you satisfy this condition only for the smallest riblets in the viscous regime. So uh, you're, you're not. It could be argued that this would extracting conclusions from these four real applications in vehicles bring. For instance, so, so so that's why we why we run the Reynolds style 550, in which that condition is met for all the riblets, even for the largest ones. Which it's very limited, but it's met. And then there's an, an additional reason for running this, which is that, as I've said before, the streamwise wavelength of these rollers that we found is 150 wall units, which is very close to the flow thickness for Reynolds style 180. So we had to really assert whether 
this was scaling with wall units and it was 150 wall units or it was actually scaling with the flow figures. Okay, so like, like the previous visualization of one normal velocity that I showed, this will be the same thing for our largest ribbon, that's a crane of sub 550. I've included in this corner the uh, flow visualization of uh, at an instant of, of one of our uh, small channels. It looks almost the same, but it's a, it's a different simulation, a smaller uh, range of stuff. There, there will be a jump across that uh, thing that you, you start to see. So we see the same coherent structures. Now there's some modulation because of larger structures that come from above that appear larger Reynolds number. But still, this uh, spiral coherence, which you can see around, is, is still present. Oh, I, I did not put them here because of time constraints, but I invite you to watch movies of this visualization and uh, to compare them with the uh, smooth uh, channel movies at that uh, channel in, in YouTube, which is our group's channel. Okay, now I show you a visualization. Um, now the statistical properties of the flow compared <coughs> also look quite similar. This is a wall normal velocity, a two dimensional spectra at a plane very close to the ripplets at a wall normal plane. So what you have here is streamwise and spiralwise wavelengths and where the energy concentrates. So for a smooth channel, wall normal velocity uh, structures typically have sizes of order 200, 300. And in the streamwise direction and 100 in the spanwise direction, you know, streamwise vortices. And now, what, what we have previously reported is that as the ribbon size increased beyond the uh, optimum point, this new region in the spectra appeared with a very concrete uh, streamwise wavelength, which is 150 watt units, like I showed in the visualizations, and with spanwise wavelengths that could range from a few ribbon spans, which would be uh, distinguished by that mark and uh, well in our previous simulations which are the dark contours we could not tell how long they could get because our channel ended there now we know that they can get up to 1000 volt units okay but other than that essentially the um, spectra fall on top of each other now, uh, if I integrate this spectra restricting it to just the uh, a few uh, ribbon uh, spans, like, so lambda z larger than say 150. Uh, I obtain a one-dimensional spectra just restricted to those larger wavelengths in the spanwise direction, and I can plot that uh, as a, uh, also with a uh, well normal direction. So uh, I obtain the position of the, the, where the energy goes in the streamwise and also in the well normal direction, and the, 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 we see that the, the energy. Here, for it, as two examples, I have plotted one normal velocity and rain of stresses, and things are falling in 150 watt units. If things are uh, scaled with channel units, then these plots will actually fall together, since uh, if, if the flow thickness was the size of things, this would have been in one. So we, we can conclude the things scaling in one unit, like, like we have done. Now, another uh, interesting thing about running at 550 is uh, that we can eliminate a um, term from the drug breakup, which, which was kind of an artifact of a low Reynolds number simulation. Uh, the, the, the drag from the momentum balance of the main flow can be divided into several components. This is the linear trend that, that uh, appeared in the viscous regime. Then this, there's this term that suddenly starts growing as, as you pass the, the optimum size, which is still present. And uh, you can calculate the same, this, this term, which is the additional stresses from the, uh, from the Reynolds stresses, if you restrict that only to, to the new region, you obtain almost the same values. And then there was this term which comes from the, um, the size of the ribbons not being much smaller than the, than the channel size, which should go to zero as you increase the Reynolds number, and that's almost gone now, it's the magenta. Okay, I'm out of time, so I'll just leave the conclusions there and be happy to take your questions. Thank you very much.
Five fifties. This one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the seven. other thing that so I, I see the, the aligned streamlines uh, things you have in boxes there. And you, you can see those throughout. What, what's this clustering of the of the uh, most colored regions? Uh, it looks like there's a I mean it looks like it's there's uh, Oh, like yeah, that? that okay, yeah. that's I said it too fast. Those are the large structures coming from above. Yeah. That, yeah, that's a high Reynolds under effect. This is just like 50, but they will be much okay, stronger. So this is the appearance of the, of the modulation. Yeah, I, uh, hand calls and uh, cut calls. You know, it's essentially big patches of overlying. Yeah. So it modulates in intensity. This very close to the wall effect. <laughs> Other you, questions? You had another color picture uh, with yes. the U. This was one no, normal that velocity. that is too. a U. Oh. One normal velocity. So red no. is coming out and blue is going in. Also that one? Oh. Yes, yes, it's the same thing. It's a different distance, but it's actually from the same simulation as that one, as the small one. Questions? Yeah. Thanks, Peter.